morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, February 18th. I'm Laura Boyd. And I'm Barry Harris. Today is a very special day. We'll be joined by a very special guest coming up a little bit later. But first, over the weather. Hi, this is Steph with the weather. Today will be partly cloudy with a high of 41. Tonight's low will be 41. The current temperature is 33 degrees and the humidity is at 70%. And the barometric pressure is at 30.02 and steady. And now to birthdays. Good morning, everybody. This is Mike with the birthdays. The birthdays for today are Charlie Simpkins, Matthew Hippensteel, Ernest Overstreet, and Thomas Shields. Happy birthday. And now over to today's headline. This is just with today's headline. President Barack Obama signed into law a $787 billion stimulus package yesterday, aimed to revive the nation's economy. Now back to the news desk. Attention all seniors, it's time to send in your pictures for the senior video. Please send in your photos to ihseniorvideo at yahoo.com. All pictures must be school related and appropriate. Get them in ASAP to ensure that they are in the video. Now over to sports. Good morning, this is Allie and Jim with today's sports. The Sixers lost to the Pacers last night 100-91. to They play again tonight at home at 8 o'clock against the Nuggets. There will be a dodgeball tournament on Friday, February 20th. Admission price is $1, and all proceeds go to the SPCA. Also, all team money is due by tomorrow. That's it for sports. Now to the news desk. Mr. Congressman, good afternoon. It's good to have you with good us. Good to be here, Barry. Okay, let's get right to the big issue, the uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. There are many components, a thousand pages worth, so which parts are going to be of benefit to the Delaware Valley? What's going to be of importance right off the bat is the amount of money that's going to go directly to the school districts and to the hospitals because we're giving Governor Rendell monies that he can immediately pay that he's unable to pay in order to give the bills revenue that for Crozier and others and schools that are laying off teachers or custodians so that's going to be the immediate benefit is to help stop the hemorrhaging of jobs that's occurring second of benefit is going to be the construction that's in there we have 319 projects in Pennsylvania writ large We've got about, and I just I sent out a press release a few days ago, identifying about 40 of them in our immediate area in my district and around it, where you can get people in a fairly short period of time working on construction. The key here is, in the first year, it's going to stop some of the hemorrhaging of jobs. We're still going to go to about 9.5%, 10% unemployment, but it won't be 12 or 13. And then by the second year, 2010, it'll kickstart that economy a bit more. So by the beginning of 2011, we'll be back to a gross domestic product of approximately 2007. And then we're off and we're running. Well, that's nice that you, you're mentioning about job loss. Now, why don't many companies practice alternatives such as furloughing workers, say, for a week rather than laying off workers? Because that's almost, you know, if you lose, you know, economy within your area, then you lose business. So why don't they try different alternatives? Actually, they do. I was just on the phone today with Oshkosh. As you know, they build many of the medical and uh, uh, trucks that you see going around. They actually build many of those trucks that you see Channel 6 and, you know, NBC and all using. They also build many of our military vehicles. They are furloughing people, putting some people on tar time, mandating that they have to take so much vacation time, trying to not put as many people off the books. The problem they have is that by their loans that they already have, they have to keep so many dollars in reserve to make sure that the banks have confidence they'll pay their bills. But as you know, the stock market's plummeted. That money was in the stock markets. It's been cut in half. Now the banks are saying, we want you to find more money to build it back up. They can only do it by a variety of ways, and one of them is, unfortunately, off people. So they're going through a variety of places, and, and many of the businesses, like Crozier, is putting some people in part-time. Some are being laid off, but they're trying to minimize the damage until we get this economy going again. And your federal government, in my opinion, is the last remaining AAA-rated safe haven for people to put their money in so we can borrow at a relatively low rate for, for a short period of time to give the money to get the economy going again. And that's what I'm trying to work hard on. Uh, outside, I heard you refer to John, uh, John F. Kennedy. Now, if you were to write your own profiles in Courage, who would you choose to profile? I like Senator Hagel. He's a Republican senator who just um, retired from the Senate. I was a Vietnam vet. He asked me to go with him, just the two of us, to Iraq. He also looked at that war as a tragic misadventure, a military man. Now, we have different philosophies, but he was honest candid and accountable for what he believed in. And so therefore he was ready to recognize that potentially he wouldn't be reelected, but he stood for what he believed in. I also feel very strongly as a person who believed that the future of America begs for accountability, transparency, and a bipartisan approach 
to our challenges. Okay, we have about one minute left, and I want to ask you this. Since we're at school, so why don't we talk about education? At your Education and Economy Summit on February 2nd, you, uh, you indicated, introduced the Business and Education Secure Tomorrow Together initiative. Interborough is one of the Absolutely. participants. So what does this involve? Dr. Lois Snyder, you have a wonderful superintendent who's been the leader on this. We have four school districts where we are taking companies, and we have approximately 25, and workforce, like rep, union representatives and others, that will come into the middle schools and, and let the students at that age know that America was built not just on the PhDs, but on those who use their hands, and increasingly in our new economy, their minds and their hands, the manufacturers of the world, the artisans. And so we're trying to make sure everyone understands at that level that, look, science and math is as important for today's welder as it is for a PhD student. Why? Did you ever go to a community college and see how they do welding? You don't just light the arc, lay the bead, and lay it down like I had them in the Navy 35 years ago. What you have to do is sit at a computer and lay off a very sophisticated bead for the higher value manufacturing. So that's what this initiative is. Because Delaware County, after it moved centuries ago away from uh, uh, farming and textiles, moved into manufacturing. And we've lost, between 2001 and 2006, 22% of our manufacturing industry here. I want to be, and 11, 14% of manufacturing workforce, I want to be part of the generation that brings that back because that's a solid part of America. Well, it looks like we are out of time, I believe. But Mr. Sestak, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be here, Barry. To do this thank again. You. I want to thank all the students and the faculty for having me here today and the staff. I also wanted to say that uh, I've been very fortunate to have some of the students from here intern for me, like Chip Ridewood and others, and I'd be honored if anyone ever wants to be a, an intern in my office, which is in media, we'd love to have you. It's an opportunity to see how a political office works, an office that's supposed to serve you and your parents. So please, 610-892-8623, 610-892-8623. If anyone wants to, some do it an hour a week, some do it every day during the summer. We're just honored to have you see what it's like to help serve others. Thanks very much. This is Joe Sestak. Honor being here today. Hi, this is Nick with the menu. Today we'll have Southern style barbecue rib sandwich with potato wedges, pineapple bites, and tomorrow we'll have hot turkey sandwich with gravy, seasoned green beans, mandarin oranges, and now over to the vocab word. This is Colin with the vocab word of the day. Today's vocab word is emote, which means to express emotion. For example, the director told me the actor had an emote or else the audience would not have known what his character was going through. Now over to the quote of the day. This is Colin with the quote of the day. Bill Mayer once said, we have a bill of rights. What we need is a bill of responsibilities. Now over to this day in history. This is Chris with this day in history. On this date, February 18th, 1564, the artist Michelangelo died in Rome. And in 2001, NASCAR driver Dale Earnhardt Sr. died in a car crash at the Daytona 500. Now over to trivia. This is Brooke with the Pointless Trivia. Did you know that pearls dissolve in vinegar? Now over to entertainment. Sup, bro? This is Chris with Entertainment. Here's some DVD releases for this week. High School Musical 3 and The Changeling. And now back to the news desk. That's it, everyone. Thanks for watching Kaleidoscope. I'm Laura Boyd. And I'm Barry Harris. Good day, good luck, and be well. That's it, everyone. Thanks for watching Kaleidoscope. I'm Laura Boyd. And I'm Barry Harris. Good day, good luck, and be well.